How's it going everybody? My name is Matt. You're watching a video on Code Tech and Tutorials. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Here we do all sorts of code stuff and various tutorial stuff and basically whatever I feel like doing because I'm a solo person who runs this channel. But today, today is a vlog on my game engine I've been making in for OpenGL, uh, which apparently is what everybody that programs in the world is doing because when I search online for it, there's a million people with their own engines. So I feel a little weird because of that, but that is not the reason I started. I started on my own accord before I had any idea anyone else was trying to do such a thing. And uh, this is, uh, what, vlog 4? I've sort of lost track. Anyway, a lot of things have happened since the last one. As you can see, I've got some objects rendering. Uh, some of them look real pixelated and weird, and that's because I've scaled it up a ton, and it's not the highest quality texture. But I just want to do a quick walkthrough of kind of where this is at. And uh, let's see, last time I showed off the whole GitHub history of a bunch of different versions. And this time is more like just some kind of planning and, and where we're going kind of thing. Because I don't want to say too much. I know I said I was going to make it public, and I just don't feel quite ready. It, it will be eventually, though. It's not It's not going to be forever. So I'm just going to show you where it's at and the tests I have set up, basically. Uh, and also, I guess I'll note the changes since last video. Um, Let's see, as I mentioned, I was on this phase two branch where I'm sort of redoing a lot of the stuff in the engine. And I didn't mean to put that behind. Okay, so here is just a ton of stuff that has happened since. Um, when was that last video? I don't know. I've kind of lost track. Maybe it was end of November or something. Yeah, it was somewhere around here. So it's been, it's been about... Well, it's December 24th now. I've done all these changes. Some of these changes were, were massive. Some of them were little. But I've basically added lights, rendering. I've started to support multiple shaders. And it's now kind of to the point where I just need to make a bunch of shaders and light logic and uh, add in some more uh, improvements on my 3D objects so they can render in different ways. Uh, the main goal is really to get PBR lighting working. I'm a little ways away from that. And I also want to get physics and colliding working in the engine. So you might be a little confused now, like, okay, it's an engine, what do I what do I do? Well, that I will go ahead and kind of show you. So here's all the engine files. Uh, these are kind of hidden behind the scene type of files. I mean, obviously when you're working on the engine, they're not. But if you're, um, for instance, deciding, okay, I want to build a game with this engine, what do I do? Uh, that's where you would kind of look at the test functions and see how you can uh, put together the engine files in a way that makes sense. But basically what you do, and let's see, I'll look at my main here. So my main, when my main runs, I, I just call uh, run all tests, and that's pretty much what I'm doing here just to make sure things are working as I'm building them and continue to work. So I have a pretty big set of test cases where I'm using a lot of the stuff in my engine. And uh, while well, this runs through them, there's an engine base case. I'll walk through these super quick, and maybe it'll give you a bit of an understanding. So the engine base case is just a function that instantiates the engine and hits the run function. And of course, the run function uh, does all the stuff for the engine to stay in a while loop till it closes. And that's all it does. It's a very base case. So this should work. And then we go to the, the next one we run, which is the engine functions base case. So this populates all the functions in the engine. Now this is sort of a weird thing. Um, I don't know if it's weird. It's actually, I like it. I don't think it's weird. So the engine is full of lists of functions that happen. And you can add or remove them as needed. And when we run this engine, it basically goes through all of these via update, render, update. There's an update with delta time, a render, and update without delta time. So it goes through all of those on each run. So basically it's up to the developer or the person using the engine to populate all these as would make sense and to come up with their own logic. And that's what you'll start to see a little bit in function demo one and two. This base case just populates them all with basically a C out that says what it does or says where it's at and it's just kind of an example to make sure it all actually runs and goes through all the loops as intended so this just tests all those 
the next test I have is just a pause. It uh, all it really does is instantiate the engine, say it's paused, and change the clear color, and then it just sits there until you close the window. Basically, there's really nothing going on. Of course, it's going through its main loop, but there's no functions that are populated in that loop, so it's basically just keeping timing and uh, going until you close it. So that's basically what pause does. Um, and by keeping timing, I mean, yeah, the time is still ticking on the game itself. So it's not a true pause, although it maybe could be. I just named it pause because it looks like it does nothing. So functions 1 and 2 is where it gets a little more interesting. This is where we start to add in uh, movement to the engine uh, and a skybox. And I have preferred defaults. Now these are just things that I would repeat over and over if I didn't make them their function of their own because they're very common things to do. Like obviously I want movement, so how about why not God movement while you're building the game? This is just the first person movement that lets you fly around the level and see what you're doing, what you're building. Preferred defaults I think just right now just changes the uh, render distance and window size, so I can call that if I want to do that real quick. So they're in a little test drive folder, a drive for do not repeat yourself, so these are functions for that. So as you can see I've instantiated some static objects here and I've added some things to the functions. Of course these add, added some things to the functions that's why they need uh, to know about the engine and they of course do it by reference so that they can add things. So in these functions is just some base stuff. This is like this sets up first person movement, first person cursor and handles some flying stuff. That's that's kind of the big one. So I'll use that over and over again and eventually I have new ones for actual more player movement but that's a nice one for just building stuff to begin with um, and let's see function demo 2 it's just basically another world I once again add the god movement defa defaults but as you see I am using the shader manager on these and this one where's the shader manager this one has a three light shader and this one has a no light shader so there's no light being calculated and this shader manager can kind of switch between them as you draw is sort of the point and you can come up with your own logic on how to do that but the shader manager will let you load in however many shaders you want and uh, use them as necessary on your objects depending on how you want them drawn so right now I have a couple just a couple but there's actually one in the skybox too that's abstracted into the skybox class that you never really see and if you want more later for like your UI that's something I'll have to either you could build that or I can make it part of the engine which I will later I think it makes sense to do in some way or some form but also I want users to be able to make their own interface if they want because you know if you're using the one from the engine all the time it's gonna it's going to look cheesy or whatever, you know, it's just going to look the same all the time. So you can't really necessarily style it. But I haven't got to it yet, so maybe I'll add an option to style it. I don't know yet. And that's it. I'll go ahead and run it. You can see all this stuff happen live. So the first test there is just testing a bunch of models and see if they actually load. It looks like they load fine. Then it pops up a window. We'll follow along in the main here. I'll show you just where in the code we're actually at. Get my window back up here. Oh god, what did I just do? I just drug something. Hopefully they didn't glitch something out. Alright, move this down. Somewhere where you can see it. Down here, I guess. Get this window up here. So this is just the engine base case. Doesn't do anything, just sits here. Uh, of course, it, this was all the test model loading it did first. Now we're doing base case. And when I cl uh, close this window, let's see. Oops, I just freaking launched Firefox. When I close this window it'll go to the next one which is the test engine pause or no I'm sorry this is the all functions loop case and let's see here we'll bring this up and as you can see it's going through and it's spitting out the happenings. If I put my mouse in here you can see the pointer change. There's some things that need edited there because it's sort of set up from the engine to be first person only so uh, I need to make a few modifications to make it so that it's, you can actually click places if you don't want to be in first person and it register properly but right now it's kind of made to move a first person camera and if I move my mouse wheel you'll see the X and Y stuff change 
on that. I guess it's only one and negative one. Interesting. Look, I can get it to negative two for a second. It looks like there might be a slight glitch in that as it seems to keep changing. I'm not entirely sure. I might need to revisit that. But anyway, that's the whole point of these tests is to see if things are working as intended. And okay, let's go to the next one. The engine pause. This one literally does nothing but sit here. Uh, now we get to function demo one, which loads in some objects and some light. You can see a point light. It's actually underneath this little spinny object. We got a rotate test there. Um, there's the spotlight. It's just pointing at that building. And there is a another base light too. That's like a constant light. You can't hardly tell, but these objects look a little dark because they're not fully lit uh, from that directional light. So there are three lights in this scene. And uh, it's basically just testing that. And there's a donut in the sky. So let's go on to the next one. So I can hit escape, get my mouse, I built that in. And now we're on to the next one. This next one is the one I started out on. It's a very big scene. It's just loading in several different objects. It's not loading in any lighting, so it's doing a no lighting shader. And that's why everything just looks like it's real value. And these are just some stuff I goofed around with on Blender. They're nothing good or spectacular, obviously. I'm just testing to make sure they actually load. So another thing I want to do that I haven't quite supported yet. Well, I won't talk about that. Never mind. That's it. That's it. So on the next one, I'll talk about more. If you want to support the series, give this video a like. Consider helping out through Patreon if you really want to see it accelerate a little faster. This is something I do in my spare time for free, and that's just kind of how it is right now. And unless other people take interest in it or I make some awesome game off of it or tutorials based on it, I don't know where it's going to go exactly. I'm just going to keep working on it. So let me know what you think. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you guys all have a good holiday season, whatever it means to you. What we can ask for is that it's better than the last. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.